Andrew Sullivan is here to request to reconstruct the community center task force and appoint some members. Mr. Sullivan. I'll be going by that clock, Billy. It's uh, 21 past. So. <laughs> How are you guys doing today? Good to see you all. Um, yeah, how does this work? Do I, uh, um, if you, I think if you would just uh, tell us a little bit about what you want to do and how okay. you do it or whatever. And, uh, so I don't, I'm terrible with dates. Sabrina, maybe help me. When did I first come before you guys to uh, request the committee? might have been less than a year ago. But any event, um, some time back, I approached you all to uh, inquire about the community center. Just kind of, you know, I'm just getting back involved in some town activities. I've uh, had a child playing hoops at the community center, and I got to spend some time there. Of course, growing up in the town, I re remember the community center well. So um, it's just, um, you know, I'm not saying that as an outsider's point of view, but as someone who hadn't really uh, been focusing too closely on the uh, goings on in the town, I just looked around and I, I thought the building, um, I was really kind of shocked to see the state of the, the building. And um, after doing some inquiry, I learned there was uh, several committees from years past. There was a large committee some eight years ago, 25 member committee. And um, you folks were nice to uh, open up the books to me to see uh, all the notes from those previous committees Sabrina shared with me. And um, you know, uh, we had talked about you had given me the latitude to go out and look for committee members to start a study group to to uh, readdress the community center and um, look at past committees work and um, maybe take a fresh look at it so you know we haven't had a committee form officially yet but that's what I'm here for tonight uh, we just have four members we're looking to put on the committee tonight including myself but um, uh, I have been unofficially talking to a lot of folks that have uh, participated in the committee from before and uh, met with some consultants and what have you to uh, look at the 30-acre property, look at the building a little closer. And um, so we're just starting to just starting to review uh, the work that had been done to date to see what might be relevant from eight years back. and. Um, but at this point, yeah, I think we're ready to, you know, go official. Hopefully, uh, you'll grant us these uh, new committee members that are Pembroke residents that were very active in the committee before. I certainly um, hope we can leave it open for more committee members, for real <coughs> solid individuals, I think, to uh, start it off. But I, there's some areas, I think, uh, that are key to this project that are not addressed by our committee members today that i uh, still kind of looking for filling in some uh, gaps for some uh, you know, grant writing, for instance. You know, really it would be helpful to find someone in the town that has some experience with that. I think there's some opportunities with this project uh, through grants. And uh, as we all know, it comes down to the financing, and uh, that's the biggest challenge we can dream of a wonderful new building there but at the end of the day we have to pay for it so um, that's uh, that will obviously be uh, one of the more challenging uh, points of the project is to address the financing side of it so we can come we can dream up a wonderful community center but um, it has to be paid for at the end of the day so um, Anyway, I'm excited about the project. You know, it's to me, it's just this amazing resource in the middle of our town. It's 30 acres, and no area town has such a large tract of land in the middle of their town that um, has such great potential. And it's really in a sad state today. And I think all the townspeople are pretty much in agreement that the building has outlived its life cycle, and uh, it's. Um, it needs to be addressed, and uh, hopefully we can we can come back to you with some uh, interesting ideas for what what can happen there. So, first step is I guess going official with the committee with you and uh, getting these committee members sworn in with me, and uh, really rolling up our sleeves. We really look forward to 
getting uh, input from townsfolk on their thoughts on it and uh, sharing with them some of the, I the new fresh ideas that we have as well. So that's where we're at. Uh, the four committee members we're looking to add are Ralph Coppola, Dan Trabuco, Mike Gamars, and, and myself. And we have Tony Marino on this too. Is he the Mike He Gamars? is not currently a resident member. Oh, okay. That's and he just took a new job too, so it's a little busy. He, I'm sure he will donate his time, but mm -hmm. right. the appointment will be problematic at the moment. Come here with should take motion, Mr. Chairman. Yes. Uh, move to reorganize the inactive community task force with the following five members Andrew Sullivan, Dan Ruco, Ralph Capella, and Michael Guimaraes. Uh, and uh, pause for a minute in case someone has another engineer to add with here. If not, that was one on Anthony Marino. Uh, he's not a resident. He's not a resident. Well, he's not a resident. Uh, he's a building inspector. Assistant building inspector. Yeah. Yeah. And he just took a job as town manager, interim town manager, and he handled this little business. So I think have the, those are the Second. names, unless yep. Okay. So I'm a little, I'm a little new to this, but I guess with a, being an official town committee, we'll uh, there's reporting methods, and I've got that booklet on. Uh, I'm sure you can help walk me through it, Dan. But uh, you know, as we schedule meetings, we post it, and everybody's. Um, find meeting space here or wherever. And yeah, sure. So um, this is how it works, Andrew, is uh, Warrer's chairman and uh, let's, uh, part of my motion will be to make Andrew chairman. Sorry, looks like an amendment. <laughs> and uh, hopefully it's like it did. <laughs> I hope you don't mind, Andrew. Uh, so how could I say uh, we sent an agenda yeah. uh, to, to Sabrina. Uh, three days prior to the meeting. Uh, so generally the meetings are, uh, well, Mondays are obviously picking up, so Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, whatever's best for the votes. And, uh, and then the minutes are taken. If the chairman does not have to take the minutes, someone in the, in the committee can take the minutes. Uh, it's simple as taking notes, uh, but those have to, have to be written and voted on by the committee at a subsequent meeting and, uh, and submitted to the town. Okay. So it, it's, it, I'll walk you through it. Please just okay? Yeah. Okay, awesome. Yeah, we're looking forward the to getting going. easy enough, it's just getting someone to do it. It is a hard part, especially for the minutes. Right. Uh, and then part of that is, and we haven't taken the, the, the vote yet, I know, Bill, so, but uh, there's also, Andrew, uh, a call for a capital funding study committee that someone, and I expect you, from this committee would, would want to be a part of that because uh, all, all the stuff you mentioned a moment ago uh, about funding for this project is, uh, is integral to whatever that committee does. Right. So this capital funding study committee, uh, you would certainly want to be a part of that and, uh, and listen and participate. Okay. So more work. Thanks for volunteering. Yeah. <laughs> okay, we'll keep me posted on that, but look forward to participating in that as well. Right. So, uh, okay. So we do have a motion and a second, and there's an amendment with a little bit of a change on that to add an Andrew Sullivan as chairman. Yes, please. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. Anybody opposed? I have a to May I have a question for the chairman? Yes. Mr. Sullivan. Yes. Uh, you've uh, gone over the two previous studies on that property. Pretty much the last one of eight years ago. I don't. I didn't find too many notes on it, the one prior to that. Okay. Well, the point is that the board is very familiar with the studies that were done on that building, and I was just wondering what your opinion was on it. It was either a couple of choices. One is to rehab the entire building, making it into another type of a building, but using the structure that's there now. And the other one was to tear it down and start new. So are you in basically in agreement that we would be starting new or that we could do something with that building? I, you know, the numbers that were presented to me from eight years back had a cost analysis and the 
the complete teardown of it was less than the remodel of it, was the bottom line. I mean, there was some pretty good numbers gathered, you know, but um, there's asbestos remediation, you know, that, mm -hmm. that I'm still waiting to, I'm trying to find the actual survey that was done that was came in at 325,000 for asbestos remediation and it was that was more than the demolition of the structure but um, from everything I've seen the facts would state you know that it was cost prohibitive to rebuild the structure mm -hmm. eight years ago and that would only be more true today so as you see uh, where your committee is going to go is to use the premise that we would uh, demolish that particular building, this would be a general plan. And we would end up building another building of some type based on the use of that building. Is that I would you say that go? would be the direction, would, yes, okay. most likely. I really don't think much effort would need, it needs to be spent on considering rehabbing after all the work that was done eight years ago. So, you know, I'm a history buff. I'm, you know, I, l I live in a house built in 1715, and, uh, you know, I love the history of Pembroke. I love the historic nature of it. So I do appreciate that there's some historic qualities to that school. It was built as a school in 1932. And, um, you know, the, there's a definitive look to downtown Pembroke that I'm, I probably fall into the historic camp on. And um, so any new structure, and Ralph Coppola, who's been quite involved with this, has mm -hmm. a lot of thoughts on this as well. The aesthetics of a new structure should really embrace the historic values of the town. So, you know, I, the more... I look around the properties too. I think they did a wonderful job with the library. I think the the exterior of the new library out back is is a really nice asset for the town. And I think whatever we consider for the community center would embrace that. And really, they're kind of sister functions in my mind. That libraries today are very multi-purpose facilities. It's not you know they're kind of serving the purposes of a community center in their own way. So, you know, these would be sister operations and they could look alike. I, I remember you mentioned it, Arthur, you know, a tie-in to the library. I mean, you know, to how they could potentially be connected. I don't think that was really investigated much some eight years back. No, it wasn't, but to put it in the architectural lines with the buildings. Right. I, I think you're right on track. You know, the thing with the library is funny. I mean, it's such a beautiful building. You really don't see it from the street. It's pretty concealed out front. You, know, you catch glimpses of it, but you know when it does open up. I mean, the the front, you know, front part of that library is very impressive. And uh, you know, there's it's you, this, the sight lines, the whole site. It, you really got to look at the other adjacent properties and how this could all tie in. And lots to think about. And we're really just at the surface here. And uh, I look forward to getting a lot of input from a lot of people, and I, I really think it's you know it's going to it's going to take a few years, but long term, I, I really think you know we have to do something about the building anyway. It's in bad, bad shape, and I don't think anyone wants to drive by a condemned building in the middle of our town. So you know we have to face the elephant in the room here a little bit, and that uh, this structure is in in uh, disrepair and. Hopefully we can get creative about it and figure out uh, some funding sources and some partnerships that can now uh, make this happen. And, you know, it really can have a wonderful campus feel to it. I was talking to Debbie Wall of, from the library and I, some years before the eight-year committee, there was talk of a campus feel. You know, we have town buildings all in the same area and it's all, it's all part of one campus, really. You think of a university campus and how all the buildings fit together and uh, that's a really interesting uh, thought process to consider for our whole downtown area beyond the new town. So uh, I was discussing with Andrew uh, a couple of weeks ago some of his initial conceptual ideas. Um, and part of some of his ideas included uh, building a community center, a new community center building, but also uh, fitting into that building the uses that are already existing in a couple of buildings up front. Um, uh, 
the building that the elderly folks use, and the, uh, the boys club building. And if we could take those buildings that are on the street with public access on the street, as long as the uses that are included there now are in the newer building, uh, lease those buildings out and those spaces out to commercial businesses as a way to uh, supplement the funding for the, for the building itself. So that will have a dual purpose, right, Andrew? That those historic buildings that are out front on the, on the street uh, will remain uh, as the structures they are, but the use will change to a business and will make Pembroke more vibrant with street presence businesses. And also, as part of uh, his conceptual project, uh, look at the project that included housing in the back, alongside, uh, you know, the housing that's behind the, the post office area? Down in what's the ball field now, include uh, housing in that area. So it's a, it's a mix of residential, community center, and businesses now using the buildings that are in front. So, uh, Andrew is before us now to start the committee, but he's been doing a lot of work in the last uh, 12 months or so that he, he's been looking into, not even 12 months. Uh, so he, he has some good ideas. Uh, the folks that he's already been talking with have some good ideas. Uh, presenting the plan and getting the funding for it is uh, are the next steps. Thank you, Dan.